Hi everyone, I'm Preet and in this video I just want to quickly take you through a new feature that we've added to Matter 7 called webhooks and basically with webhooks what you can do is for events triggered inside of Matter 7 such as credential issuance you can send a trigger to your server so a webhook that's, uh, that you configure and we send the data about a particular activity to you so that you can act upon it. So let's quickly jump into an example of what this would look like. Uh, I have my kakapo.matter.global demo website that I've built and for the passport issuance, so the government of Kakapo, they want to make sure that after I have my credential issued to me, they want to capture my uh, DID, my wallet DID, and then sort of send further credentials uh, with it. So what you can see here is I've got a open ID issuance flow for the passport created for me. And basically when I'll scan that QR code, it'll take me through the OIDC flow on the wallet to get my credential issued to me. But you don't want to be doing this every single time as a issuer. Say you want to issue some other credential as well. You don't want to be showing QR codes all the time. It's a, it's a bit of a cumbersome user experience. So in order to improve that, what you should do is ideally capture the wallet's did against the user record of the person that you're trying to issue the credential for. Now with OIDC, because the whole flow is orchestrated by Matter, there isn't really a way for you to interject and sort of capture that wallet did until today. Because with webhooks, what you can do is if we go to learn, you will see that we have now added a webhook for event OIDC issuer credential issued. So basically what will happen is as soon as I scan this QR code and sort of go through and cap, uh, collect my credential, a webhook will be fired and it will notify your system about a credential being issued alongside all the relevant metadata like the users did and you can store that against the user record. So let's see how that works in practice. Um, everything I'm talking about, there's much more details inside of learn.matter.global. So visit that and you can find out more sort of detailed instructions. So basically, in order to set up a webhook, we go to this create a webhook tutorial. You're making a single post call to this URL. So if I open up my postman, uh, it'll be your tenant URL slash v1 slash webhooks. Actually, let me see. Oh, no, I'm missing core. So it'll be slash core slash v1 slash webhooks, yes. And then inside of your events, uh, you want to put an OIDC issuer credential issued. So events can be a type of array, so you can have multiple um, events that you want to capture. For the time being, as we're rolling this out, we're starting off with OIDC credential issuance and we'll be rolling out further activities that you can track um, in the near future as well. For now, that's the one that we can use. And for the URL, Ideally, this would be a callback server on your side that you will set up to receive this data. For this demonstration, I'm just going to use this webhooks.site. Oh, website. So webhooks.site is a quick way for you to test sort of emulating a webhook. And what this is going to do is it's going to give me a URL that I can give to my system so I can put in here basically how it works is if i make a post call to this url with some data let's just go in here hello world if i make a post call to this if we go back to safari you'll see a it'll, it'll basically just capture any request that it gets and shows it to you so let's see uh, let's basically use this url in our webhook I've added that URL here um, and I'm on my Kakapo government tenant. So the one that's issuing the passport, I'm going to create my webhook and it's as simple as that. You can see that by default it is enabled, but you can disable it as well. If you want to sort of, for some reason, disable your webhook temporarily, you can do that here. But beyond sort of providing a URL in the event that you want to capture, that's all that we um, require for you to do. So let's try this out. Um, I'm going to go back to the passport letter over here. On, on the left, I've got my phone set up. Um, that's this phone being mirrored on the screen. I'll go launch in the Matter Wallet, open the wallet up and scan this QR code. Right, once I've done this, I'm just gonna go back to this webhooks website. I'm gonna delete this so we have a clean slate. 
watch what happens on the webhooks uh, website, right? I'm going to collect this credential. I'm going to go through my OIDC flow. I'm going to continue. Do a face scan. and confirm my details. And as soon as the credential is created, it is going to fire a webhook. You can just see that just showed up. So on my wallet, I've got my passport credential, but you can see that a webhook was fired over here and you can see all the details about the credential that was just issued. Okay, so let's take a look through all the properties of this event. Uh, we firstly have a type, OIDC issue credential issued. And then inside here, we have the payload. So you have the issuer ID, so your, ID, your issuer client that was used to create this credential, the type of credential that was issued, that's a JSON-LD W3C verifiable credential. And then you have the credential itself. So that's your entire credential that was issued um, over here. And then if we just scroll down bottom over here, you'll also see a OIDC claims value. So these are all the claims that were passed from your ID token. So if you want to have some sort of debugging set up, uh, you can do that here and you can easily see all the claims that were um, passed from your identity provider and sort of debug from there if, you, if you'd like to do that as well. And more importantly, if we go back to our credential, you will see that in my credential for inside of credential subject, I've got my ID and this basically is the did of the wallet that was issued this credential. So now I can comfortably take this data and store it against the user record for any further interactions that I want to have with the client. Okay, so just a little bit more um, information for you. You shouldn't be passing any query parameters or hash fragments to the webhook URL that you provide to us. Those will be dropped. And also the URL that you provide to us should return a 200 uh, level response Otherwise, we will sort of try a retry and eventually mark it as unable to deliver. So make sure that your API server is returning a 200 response in a relatively quick amount of time as well. And the other thing that I want to point out is that Meta doesn't guarantee the delivery of events in the same order that they happen or that there, there are any duplicates present. So make sure that you check for duplicates using the event.id um, value. And that's basically inside if we take a look at our um, payload here, that would be the event.id, this field here. Make sure you use that to check for duplicates on your system as well. Okay, and that's it. Uh, if you want to learn more or sort of get started yourself, head on over to learn.matter.global, go down to the webhooks section and look at all the uh, excellent documentation that we've got um, provided for you. We're starting off with the OIDC credential issued event and we'll be rolling out more in the future, so keep an eye out for them and happy building.